Hey everyone, Jonathan Baylor here back. And today, really going to have an awesome talk with an awesome individual who is really one of the nation's leading experts in a subject which is near and dear to all of our hearts. Uh, and, and she is none other than the best selling author of The Hormone Diet, Supercharged Hormone Diet, and the Carb Sensitivity Program. Right there, you can see why she's on the show. And her name is none other than Dr. Natasha Turner. And she is one of the nation's leading naturopathic doctors, as well as the founder of the Clear Medicine and Wellness Boutique in Toronto, Canada. She's awesome. She's energetic. And she's all about hormones. So, Natasha, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jonathan. Nice to talk to you. Hey, Dr. Turner, well, just to get started here, can you tell us a little bit about your story and how you came to focus on what, what we all now know really is the control system for the body, what we should be thinking about instead of calories, and that is hormones. How did you how did you end up in the wonderful place you are today? Well, um, I was uh, I graduated from university. I did my undergrad, and I finished in 1993. And that summer, uh, I was exercising like an hour a day. I was watching what I was eating. I was living a really balanced, healthy lifestyle. And uh, over the four months of the summer, I continued to gain steadily weight. By the end of it, I had gained about 20 pounds. So I thought, well, obviously what I'm doing isn't working, so I'm going to do it harder. So I cut my calories more, and I added another 20, 25 minutes of cardio to the end of my weight training session. It was already an hour, and uh, did that for about another week and gained another five pounds, and then eventually ended up in the emergency ward because I couldn't understand people when they spoke to me. I was confused. I, I, I just couldn't process information. I couldn't drive the car. And uh, it's blood work at that time. Obviously, it un uncovered that I had some imbalances. And I discovered that I had a deficiency of thyroid hormone. So it was then that I realized, okay, I've been watching what I've been eating. And I'm exercising. And yet I gained 20, 25 pounds. So that's when I first realized that it wasn't not at all about calories in minus calories out equals weight loss. I realized that these hormones were really powerful things. And um, I actually, what I was doing to try and get myself back in shape and back in balance, I actually made the problem worse because cutting my calories so much and then and, and over-exercising, I actually raised my stress hormones and that suppressed my thyroid hormone even more. So that was my first indication that, that hormones are really powerful things. And um, then I graduated from naturopathic school in 1999 and another stressful event, I guess. And I, uh, at that time, I started gaining weight again. I started losing my hair. Uh, I started getting irregular periods and, and all of these types of hormonal mishaps again. And I got diagnosed with polycystic ovarian disease, which is associated with insulin resistance and, and too much estrogen. And so, again, I got uh, this label of, uh, of a uh, metabolic disorder related to hormone disruption. And uh, that's when I started seeing patients in my practice, and I started to see that everybody had so many hormone problems, and no one was really looking big picture and, and, and really considering the type of approach that we need to, to use to focus on balancing all the hormones, not just one, because all the hormones communicate together. And so that was really the, the process and the journey. Dr. Turner, that is it's so fascinating, and it's so unfortunate how common of a story, sadly, this is becoming, where the analogy I love, uh, a gentleman by the name of Adam Kozlov introduced me to this analogy, and it's, it's imagine, like, you have an individual here who's struggling, yourself in this instance, who's struggling uh, with their weight, gaining weight, and then they just try harder, they, they eat less, they exercise more, and that causes the stress, which fundamentally, ironically, it's the stress, it's the hormonal dysregulation, yeah. which is actually the root cause, and the treatment actually makes, the quote-unquote treatment actually exacerbates the underlying issue, and the analogy that Adam uses, which I think is so profound, is it's like taking someone who has a fever and submerging them like into an ice bath <laughs> for the for the, the idea that it would it will cool them down, which it will, but then they end up getting sicker because they get hypothermia, and it's this endless <laughs> cycle that, yeah. that, that they then become they get the sense of learned helplessness, like I'm trying harder and I'm doing worse, therefore this is hopeless and I might as well just give up. Whereas in reality, it's just that they've essentially been written the wrong prescription. That's, that's exactly right. And I mean, honestly, this whole process of getting rid of body fat and maintaining balance becomes so much more difficult when we age. And um, I think getting into your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, you have to become aware of 
of the things that you're doing that that are just disrupting your hormones and causing so much more of the problem. And the huge thing is the way people choose to exercise and then the way they try and cut their calories and they skip meals, it's just like, it definitely perpetuates the problem and it gets worse with age. Absolutely. And, and Dr. Turner, that's one of the things that I think is such a struggle with this because a couple things. One is when we're younger, there's things that we can do that quote unquote work that we can't do when we're older. And what, what the, the surprising thing is, is for example, we may perceive when we're younger, excessive exercise, like I call it chronic cardio. And yeah. the reason we're staying slim. However, it is probably just the fact that we have a different hormonal balance and, and it's actually not that chronic exercise. So the things we think are keeping us healthy actually aren't. The things that are keeping us quote unquote healthy and slim are these systemic hormonal things, which actually we want to modify later in life. We don't do things like chronic cardio. We do things like change the quality of the food we're eating and do potentially uh, lower impact but higher intensity exercise. So we conflate the things which we did when we were younger with the cause of our slimness, when in reality, it had nothing to do with our slimness. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I tell patients, I don't want you to go longer. I want you to go harder. So I totally agree. You need short and high intensity circuit training. I mean, the hormone diet, I recommend cardio maximum once to twice a week and never longer than 30 minutes and always intervals to training. I mean, when I started doing that workout in, in, in the book, the, the, the strength training workout, that's what cured my polycystic ovarian syndrome. My excessive carb cravings, my hair loss, my burning feet, my belly fat, everything went completely away when I started to do, to do like, I, I couldn't believe it. I actually was exercising half the time, half the time. And, and I got, I was ripped and I felt amazing and I didn't have as many injuries. I couldn't believe that I actually needed to exercise less. I just couldn't, like, I, I just couldn't wrap my head around the fact that it was such a bad thing if I added a half an hour of cardio to the end of my half an hour weight training session. Like, it's just, I stopped doing all of that and, and raising the stress hormones and I built so much muscle and it balanced all my insulin levels. It was, incredible. and then all the symptoms of polycystic went completely away just between watching, changing the exercise routine and becoming very carb conscious. And Dr. Turner, I think the thing that is such potentially a challenge for some people is that, like you said, I, I couldn't believe this. Like there's, there's this intuitive, especially in yeah. more of a Western culture where like more is better. So more yeah. has to be better. But I think if we, if we can do a little mental gymnastics and like bring in a different model, like let's use the, the model of pharmacology. We all understand that more isn't better. Like if some penicillin is good for you, that doesn't mean that taking more penicillin will make you better faster. In fact, it will make you worse. So yeah. if we can start thinking of exercise in many ways as a very, very potent medicine, because it, it, it is a medicine. I completely agree. That's the whole reason why I, I set my clinic up in Toronto that I had to have the strength training facility in the clinic because all, every doctor tells their patient how to do it, how to exercise, but how you exercise as you age is you're right. It is medicine and that you have to do it properly. When you do it properly, it's, you, re, it, you require so little of it. And, and, and thinking let's, let's continue the, the pharmacology analogy because I think it fits so well. And that's imagine like we actually sometimes Dr. Turner, I'm sure you've heard this, you, you hear the message of just, just go do something like just, mm -hmm. just go do something. That would be analogous to, to you telling one of your patients or me telling uh, one of my clients, hey, just open up a medicine cabinet and just take something. Just take <laughs> something. Just put a pill in your body. No, no. <laughs> That's funny. Like what we're actually doing, the quality of what we're doing yeah. matters immensely. And just like you wouldn't take any random prescription because you know it could make you worse. Just yeah. going and doing any random exercise routine can, in fact, make you worse. And it, it, it does. I mean, I looked at um, the hormonal response to exercise. With, with men and women, we are, we're all looking to boost your growth hormones so that you build muscle and repair bone and repair your skin cells and, uh, and burn fat. And you're trying to lower cortisol. So, I mean, how you do, how you do your strength training, if you, don't, if you don't know what you're doing, you're not going to get that hormonal response. And even the number of sets you do, the number of repetitions, the amount of weight that you use, um, I really looked into all of those factors so that I could put together 
the best recommendations for each person so that when you do your training like this, you are going to get the best hormonal response. And um, the, the great thing about that workout is it's so short and it's, it's just so it's fun and it's easy to, it's so easy to do. And, uh, I, I mean, I've been doing the same workout for 14 years. <laughs> well, and it, it is well, like easy exercises and stuff like that, but overall it's the same. And you know, there's a really great example. This woman from Vancouver, she actually used to be a model uh, when she was younger and she saw me, I, can't remember, I don't know, she saw me on a TV show uh, and anyway, she contacted me and I, I was counseling her as a, uh, as a, you know, she's a patient from, from, from the East Coast or West Coast, I never met her, but uh, she had dieted, obviously, she used to eat um, lettuce, Kleenex wrapped in lettuce. That's what they would eat to stuff their stomach so because they were trying to eat no calories. And she, for her lifetime, was an excessive exerciser and she cut her calories significantly. And I got her to stop going to the gym. I reduced, reduced her days to only four days, maximum half an hour each time. And I got her eating every three to four hours with the protein. And uh, she lost 30 pounds and gained muscle and she was exercising less and, and, and eating more. <laughs> well, that's, that is the tagline of my first book, Eat Less, Exercise More, But Do It Smarter. And it's, yeah. it's just shocking how how it, 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 it is not even an opinion. It's like, on Amazon. You can click on it and see. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, and Dr. Turner, one other thing that I wanted to mention, because uh, I know we have a lot of uh, wonderful female listeners, and you mentioned something about having the way you eat and the way you exercise all focus on triggering certain uh, growth hormones and growth-related hormones, and just quickly to make sure that we're all on the same page here. And certainly, please chime in. When we talk about growth hormone, we're not talking about enabling an individual to build muscle such that a woman looks like a man or a man looks like a bulldog, but rather, and this is kind of a morbid analogy, feel free to disagree with me if you think it's too morbid, but, but after we're born, we're, we're essentially, I mean, once once we reach adulthood, we're, it's, it's natural to essentially be on a slow path towards decline. I mean, that's, that's natural order. So, so in some ways, this is again, we're gonna we're gonna make it happy. Don't worry. We are it's slowly dying. Like if we don't do something, we're just slowly dying. Like every day, we're a little bit closer to dying. But we can stop that, and we can make every day a day of growth and a day of development. And that doesn't mean we're gonna look like monsters. It just means we're not gonna look like we're dying anymore. We're gonna stay looking healthy and stay in a state of growth rather than a state of decline. And, and you can completely, I mean, what causes the decline is obviously the hormones that allow your tissues to break down and weaken and high cortisol and, and high insulin, uh, and low growth hormone, and low DHEA, which is the anti-aging, anti-stress hormones. All of these, that's what causes the decline, but you're absolutely right. I mean, we can do things on a daily basis to, to modify uh, the, the, cha the hormonal changes and to stay living, I say, you know, live longer, um, build strength, you know, that's what we want. Absolutely. Look younger, longer. <laughs> and, and Dr. Turner, what have you found to be the most effective way with your clients to help shift our mind from thinking uh, of food as a source of calories and exercise as a way to burn calories, this calorie mindset, instead of thinking of food and exercise as a control system for our hormones, how have you helped people to make that mental shift? Um, well, I do a lot of lecturing, and uh, this I have this. I found this one study that I think really clearly shows people that it is not about the calories; it's about the source of your calories and how you consume those calories and when and which combination. I, I found a study that there's a everybody in the study was overweight or obese, and they were all given cereal for breakfast. However, half of the subjects were given uh, two eggs to consume in addition to the cereal. So they are eating more calories. And at the end of the study, the people that were consuming the two eggs in addition to the cereal lost 65% more weight and their cholesterol panel was better and their insulin levels were lower. And so that I think helps people see, like, so I say it's not about the calories. It's about how you consume them and in the proper proportions and when, uh, and all of that alters, alters your hormones. So uh, it's, I think it's a, it's a slow and steady process. And I think anybody that's read my book, um, certainly I'm not, I'm not at fault for not having enough information, <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of, but I think I, I really feel good about the, the process that I've laid out in there because 
each each step of the of the three step process, there's things that you're doing. There's things you're doing already. So the whole program starts with sleep, and and it goes into stress management, and then detoxification of you know optimizing your digestive system function in your liver because your digestive system is the largest hormone producing tissue in your body, and your liver is your major fat burning organ. So. Um, that get people to understand the relationship between their toxins, their stress, their sleep, and the impact on their hormones and their body composition. And then I get them to move from that step into the, the middle stage, which is that's when I teach people how to eat for hormonal response. What are your best proteins, carbs, and fats? And why do you need these? And how do they impact your hormones? And which combinations? And, uh, and then finally, I go into exercise because uh, we know that people who... Uh, are sleep deprived or don't sleep well, will have an increased body mass index regardless of their diet and exercise habits. So uh, I like get, to get people to focus on building the foundation um, uh, for, her, for the perfect hormonal response once they start to implement exercise. And I like to tell people that you have a whole life to be healthy. You don't have to do everything all at once. So focusing on phasing things in over, uh, over a period of about six weeks it becomes a lifestyle habit. It becomes um, something that you can manage, and uh, and the benefits all you know. It's really nice to kick in exercise in the right way after you've done four weeks of of changing your diet and changing the foods that you eat and improving and uh, altering your your metabolic response. So uh, I think you know gradually I got I think I've succeeded in getting the picture across to people that everything you do think, say, or feel is impacting your hormones from one minute to the next. And so you've just got to learn how to do the right things to optimize hormone balance. And that's what, I, that's what the program does. It really teaches you all the things you need to do. You can't just focus on nutrition. You can't just focus on exercise. You have to really focus on even your skincare. Even your skincare can alter your, your hormones. Absolutely. And it's really, I mean, hormones that in some ways people can, well, think, well, you're just saying everything is hormones, but in some ways it, 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 it is like everything that happens in our body in, this, in essence happens because there is a hormonal uh, communication going on saying do this and really everything we do, our mood, that's all tied back. Like everything we do influences our hormones and our hormones influence everything we do. And, and uh, I think I mean, what sets my clinic apart is that we have a treatment philosophy and it is all aimed at restoring optimal hormonal balance and restoring the imbalances, maybe their nutritional deficiencies or these types of things that cause hormone disruption uh, and, and can increase your risk for diseases associated with aging from everything from Alzheimer's to osteoporosis, heart disease, stroke. And so... Um, I know your hor- everything's controlling your hormones from one minute to the next, but then the unique thing I think that we have is that we restore these imbalances in a certain order because your one hormone impacts another. So, for instance, I know that I have to balance your blood sugar and your insulin levels along with your mood hormones. Because people can't follow a diet if they're anxious and they're worried or they're depressed because they're naturally going to crave more carbohydrates or they have an excessive appetite and they won't be able to stay on track. But before I even balance your blood sugar and insulin, I know I need to improve your sleep because if you don't sleep enough, you're going to wake up that day with higher cortisol levels. You're going to wake up that day with higher hormones that make you want to eat and not just eat broccoli. You're, you're eating comfort foods and you're eating way more of the comfort foods. So um, that just gives you an indication of the steps that we go to. But you end up, when you go through the whole process, you end up restoring the balance of all of the hormones and you restore the balance of all of the hormones in the right order. And I, um, I'm recognized as one of the top thyroid doctors in, in, in North America. And when people come to see me, I don't do anything for their thyroid until much later because your stress hormones, your sex hormones, your insulin, your inflammation, um, your sleep patterns, your exercise habits, all of these impact your, your thyroid. So sometimes... I have patients that, that do the uh, supercharged hormone diet approach, and they cut their thyroid uh, prescription. And they actually lower they lower the dosage because they restore the balance of so many other hormones that improves the function of the thyroid. Dr. Turner, it is literally amazing and empowering to know that there is a an alternate approach and an alternate approach to this eat less, exercise more dogma that is not just a theory. Like this, in, in many ways, is old news like this the actual experts correct me if i'm wrong but at least in my research the actual experts have known this for 
decades and decades and decades. It just seems that when people who are not tapped into science, aka politicians, aka potentially even some celebrities, start uh, start trying to dapple in this arena, that it started to become a lot more confusing and a lot more calorie based. But but and if that works for you, I guess keep it up. But this is such a, a more scientifically backed and frankly simpler approach, is it not? It's it is. Yeah, it is. I mean, and you feel your your best. Like um, I tell people, stop. You know, uh, don't focus on weight loss. What you're going to do is focus on restoring total total health and hormonal balance. And weight loss becomes a wonderful side effect. Like, um, and and it's proven. People that focus on restoring their health, they, they are they're much more successful in in, in achieving their goals. And um, you know, because you can, no one, the studies too also show that losing weight doesn't necessarily make you healthier either. Absolutely. You've got to do it in a way that, that isn't destroying, you know, where you're doing some excessive dieting where you're losing muscle tissue and then you lose muscle tissue, then insulin has no tissue to, to do its work when you start to, you know, eat normally again. So it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's something that's not difficult at all. Uh, you just need the proper guidelines. And, um, but it's, I think when I first released the book in 2009, um, the whole concept of hormones with weight loss, it, it really wasn't that, I, you know, it wasn't really out there yet, but it's completely exploded since then. I mean, I think that's probably why I think that, that the Dr. Oz show found, found me to, to this topic. It just seems to be something that's becoming more and more on people's minds. Absolutely. When I love what you said about the whole weight loss ensues, because in fact, I believe if our focus is not first, our focus should really just be restoring the body's natural ability to be healthy and automatically regulate us around a, a slimmer, healthier uh, state of, of weight and hormonal balance. And that if we're not doing that, if, if weight loss becomes our, our direct pursuit rather than something that ensues, nine times out of ten, if not more, literally we are doing more harm than because anything we would do to drop weight at the expense of our health right. will come back to make us heavier and sicker in the long term. Absolutely. And I mean, uh, <clears throat> when I first, uh, I did my first interview here, I did Canada AM. It's their only national morning news show. And uh, the woman I, I was speaking about, I said, you know, uh, she said, okay, so what's your new book? And I said, it's the hormone diet. And, and she said, what's the concept? And I said, that your hormones are controlling everything to do with weight loss, how your body responds to a diet, how, how your appetite, your cravings, where you store your fat, how it responds to exercise, everything is controlled by your hormones. And, and she said, okay, so if you're saying that, that, um, that weight loss is controlled by your hormones, then how do you know if your hormones are balanced? And then I said, well, um, Let's look at the symptoms of hormonal imbalance. Do you feel tired after eating? Do you have cravings? Do you have difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep? Do you feel anxious? Do you have headaches? Do you have, do you have belly fat? Um, and it's like all these people listening, it was check, 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 check. And then she said, so you mean to tell me if you have symptoms like this, that means your metabolism is not optimized. And I said, yes, that's exactly that. So if you think about getting rid of the symptoms of hormonal imbalance, like low libido or PMS or memory loss, all of this stuff, you're going to fix that hormonal imbalance and your metabolism is going to be better and you're going to look better and lose the weight. And that day, my, uh, my book sold out in chapters all across Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, it's, it's very true, right? If, if I think unfortunately we have become so uh, used to living in a state of chronic sickness for lack of better terms that, that we don't actually realize like once you achieve hormonal balance, you don't feel tired all the time. You don't like if you are not feeling robust, essentially 24, seven, 365, that is indicative of a deeper underlying problem. We get that right. If you have the flu, it's not, you don't need to eat less and exercise more to cure the flu. Like there's something deeper going on and you need to solve that deeper thing. You need to eliminate that, that virus or that bacteria. Same thing here is there's something going on with the system. And if you feel bad, tired, gastrointestinal discomfort, moody, you don't need to eat less and exercise more. <laughs> you need to solve that yeah, hormonal solve problem, right? You know, there's three, I, I asked three questions. Um, 
uh, every single patient that I see, how is your energy? How's your libido? And do you have any food cravings? If you have a uh, change in any one of those things, uh, that is a sign that something is out of balance with your health or your diet. And uh, people cannot believe uh, that, I mean, I have a class format. I put people through the hormone diet approach over a five-week period. And consistently, like, I mean, that's in a group format. I've been doing it for patients, obviously, for the last 10 years. But people cannot believe that they don't have any cravings and they don't feel hungry and they don't get the energy highs and lows and that everything just becomes consistent when, when you use the nutrition approach approach that balances your hormones. Like I have people say, I've had a sweet tooth for 30 years. And, and there's in people, and I say, you never should have cravings. If you're craving sugar or carbs, something is out of balance with your, with your diet. You're either eating too many carbohydrates or the wrong type type of, of the good carbs sometimes, even for you, or you're not eating enough protein, uh, or obviously and sleep deprivation or stress really triggers cravings. But I mean, on a general daily basis, if you've got cravings every day, your, your diet's not balanced. It, it is definitely a paradigm shift to, to understand how simple, in some sense, health can be once we have the correct information. No? And, and how quickly things change. Like, I have a study that shows if you drink a blueberry smoothie every day for six weeks, at the end of the six weeks, you're going to have 22% improvement in insulin sensitivity, which include, basically means your metabolism is going to be better. And it's, like, it's, ha- it's amazing how, hap- how quickly it happens if you give your body the right tools. I, t- I tell people, you can change your hormones by your very next meal. Oh, abs- absolutely. And, and just let's, let's, let's wrap up here, Dr. Turner, with, I think, an, an interesting example of, of how much promise and how much hope I think our listeners should have with this new hormonally based versus caloric approach, just as a little example. And we may as individuals have experienced this or know someone who does. And let's, let's go back to the beginning of the podcast when we talked about exercise and the wrong kind of exercise being counterproductive. Dr. Turner, how many people have you met, or maybe you even were this individual at one point in time where you would wake up early or go to bed late, AKA you would sleep less so that you could exercise Four, so and then so so now you wake up at 4 a.m. instead of a, a reasonable time so that you can do a bunch of cardio and then you need shower and blah 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 and because you don't have that cardio now you're craving the very types of insane foods which cause these hormonal problems in the first place so you've taken sleep which is something you do need and something that will heal your hormones and you've reduced that so that you can do more of an activity that increases stress hormones and causes you to crave the foods that cause further hormonal damage. That's right. I, mean, you know, I have this woman, and a patient of mine, she's 5'8", and she does that. She gets up every morning at 5 a.m. and gets and goes to the gym, and she was, doing all, she was doing tons of cardio, and then she was coming home, she'd feed her kids, then she'd have to go to bed for two hours in the morning because she was exhausted. And then I, start, I said, listen, sleep in, sleep in, feed your kids breakfast, and then go and do your workout for a half an hour when you were napping before. That is so much better for your body. Like, she just couldn't wrap her head around the fact that she didn't need to get up that early and she didn't need to do all the cardio and that what she was doing for the last five years was actually making her worse. Well, and, and to be to be fair, when we're given this this incorrect information, like if we're all if we all believe the dogma that it's all about calories, then your client was doing the right thing, right? Like then everything yeah. you do should be about burning more calories and taking less in. But the science has shown that is not that is not the approach. So so if that's not the approach, then we have to take a different approach because we're not worried about that anymore, right? That's right. Well, Dr. Turner, this has been just wonderful. And I know you and I could probably talk for 24 hours straight. We, we, we wouldn't get any sleep and our hormone <laughs> levels would go completely down the tubes because we are both passionate about this new hormonal approach. But folks, if you want to learn more about Dr. Turner, I would highly recommend checking out her wonderful best-selling books. She's got three, The Hormone Diet, supercharged hormone diet, as well as the carb sensitivity program. Check them all out, as well as her website, which is drnatashaturner.com. And Dr. Turner, thank you so much for sharing this with us. I really think this information can truly unlock uh, so much that seems impossible for so many because they felt like they tried everything. And frankly, they have in the calorie model. But once you get into this hormonal model, and it's just like, 
you know, you're driving north instead of driving south, and you're going to get to a totally different destination when you take that. Away. You're exactly right. If you go on Amazon.com and click and look at the reviews of the book, you're going to see story after story of people saying, I had no idea. I, you know, this is, I, I, I've tried everything and it's not worked. And now I'm doing this and I feel amazing. And, and, uh, and I get now what I was doing was wrong before. So there's lots and lots and lots of uh, really good su- success stories there too. If people want to check it out. I love it. And what, what's next for you, Dr. Turner? You obviously <clears throat> these three wonderful pieces of literature, the hormone diet, supercharged hormone diet and the carbon sensitivity program. What's next? Well, <laughs> I just, I came up, uh, came up with a couple of book ideas. So I just pitched my agent, um, to approach Rodale and, uh, Random House here in Canada. I'm published by Rodale in the United States and Random House in Canada. So I got, I got a couple ideas for some, for a book. I'd like to start writing again, I think in December if I could. And, and, uh, but you know, still on the hormone thing. Cause I, I'm, you know, this, this area int- intrigues me. So I think I'll still be writing on, on this topic and I'm just right now I'm just, I actually just filmed uh, a little bit of a, a piece for a documentary on uh, done by a Paramount Pictures producer. It's called Balance. It's on hormones. So there's lots of really neat things that are happening, and I'm never short of ideas, so it's good. But I'm lucky because I'm passionate about my work, so I don't, you know, I don't mind doing all this all the time. I love it, Dr. Turner. Well, we certainly appreciate it because you're, you're, you're spreading a message that enables health and enables happiness and is rooted in science and results. So I really do appreciate that. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. You have a great day. So, hey, and everyone, thank you so much for listening. I hope this was enjoyable for you as it was for me. And please do tech out, check out Dr. Turner's website at drnatashaturner.com. And remember, for all of this week and for every week afterwards, eat more and exercise less but smarter. Talk to you soon.